Benima Andre Foundation, a fundraising organization for medical emergencies, maternal and child care needs. Why? Because we believe everyone should have access to quality health care irrespective of their financial circumstances. Now, over the next five years, we intend to reach 1,000 beneficiaries and I want you to continue to be part of our journey, part of our story by joining our growing community of consistent donors and helping us change lives one person at a time. I am a Muslim lifestyle page ready to reshape the wrong steps you've taken and the ones you're about to take if it's not quran and sunnah if it's not halal i'll never partake and if you care to know more about me i guess you can follow my page i am a sage when it comes to halal fun cruise groove vox pops and even halal games i keep my open life Men could be funny sometimes, it's why I rely alone on Allah anytime Come sun or rain And that's the reason I chose Musta'ina as my name Musta'ina A'udhu <laughs> Billah من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طه ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا الرحمن على العرش السماء له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثغاء وإن تجهل بالقول فإنه يعلم سر وأخفى الله لا له الياسماء لحسنات الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى وهل أتاك حديث موسى إذ أنا فقال لأهلهم كثوا إني أنا السناغ لعلي آتيكم منها بقبس لعلي آتيكم منها بقبس أو أجد على النار هدى
Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabu wa sallam. All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thanking him, we glorify him, we testify to his oneness. He is alone without any associate. We also testify that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. May the peace and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to be on the soul of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household and his companions. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to show his blessing and mercy on all of us as well. I mean, you are welcome to yet another edition. Um, today, inshallah, we want to um, bring to us the short story about um, one of the Ummat al Mu'minin, one of the mothers of the believers. Her name is Hafsa bint Umar. Hafsa bint Umar, the daughter of Umar ibn al Khattab, radiallahu anha. From the during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it's a matter of honor for a man to give his daughter a marriage to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and who would not want to like that? The, every single Muslim desired to be an in-law to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because you know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is going to occupy the highest place in Al-Jannah. And you have your daughter also in the highest place in Al Jannah with the Prophet. So it was a thing of joy for people to have their daughters in the house of the Prophet. Uh, one of those who had you know, their daughters in the house of the Prophet as his wife was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who had Aisha, and Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu, who had Hafsa. May the peace and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to be on the soul of the wives of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. There was one particular incident that happened in the life of Hafsa. It was an incident that was capable of changing the entire life of Hafsa. And it was a story that every single Muslim woman should pay attention to. He got to a point, and we know that the Prophet wasallam was not also immune from the matrimonial crisis. One of the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the test that we encounter in our matrimonial homes. Sometimes we expect our relationship with our husband or with our wives to be beautiful, to be seamless, to be joyous. But sometimes we encounter frictions. Sometimes we encounter disagreements. Sometimes those disagreements become so troublesome. And they are the reason why a lot of people also enter into depression. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whichever household is going through any kind of matrimonial crisis, matrimonial, you know, um, situation that the marriage become threatened, we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct their affairs in the best manner. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften everyone's heart. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change the dire situation to that of joy for them. But this is the story of Hafsa. She was not also immune from matrimonial crisis. And it got to a point that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to divorce Hafsa. In fact, in another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had divorced Hafsa. It was a serious matter. It was something that not only was it very you know, disturbing and was something that was a thing of sadness for Hafsa herself, it, is, it was also the same for her father. Omar ibn al-Khattab Don't forget that we mentioned that it was a thing of joy for every single Muslim to have you know, the, his daughter married to the Prophet So what happened? After the Prophet had divorced Hafsa, shortly afterwards, Jibril came. And what do we know of Jibril? Jibril is the head of all the angels who 
always bring divine revelation to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa idha qila lahum usjudu lir rahman. Qalu wa mar rahman anasjudu lima ta'muruna wa zadahum nufura. Tabarak alladhi ja'ala fi s-samai burujan wa ja'ala fiha wa ja'ala fiha sirajan wa qamaran munira wa huwa alladhi ja'ala al-layla wa naha musta'ina Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Jamil Badmos Adiremi. I'm a business development executive of Lotus Capital, Ramadan Mubarak. Today I'll be talking in all, I'll be talking on one of the structures of Islamic uh, finance. And um, the topic for today is Ijara. What is Ijara? Ijara simply means lease. Ijara is a contract, it's a service contract where one party transfer the right of owner right to use to another party at an agreed um, concentration for a specific period of time. For example, a client may approach a financial institution that would like to acquire an automobile, say a motor car. The bank will buy the assets and make the um, other make necessary charges open to the client. Then the two parties will agree on what to pay as rental, which might be monthly, quarterly, or yearly, and for a specific period of time. Ijara has a key role. Number one, it must be for a non-consumable items, except for a uh, service Ijara. The lessor takes the ownership of the assets, and the repayments must be uh, well specified between the both parties. We have different types of Ijara. There is operating lease, there is finance list, and there is service um, lease. Service lease are for uh, people that want to um, access facilities for um, that want to access facility for health or education. While operating lease gives rights to the owner to take the possession of the asset at the end of the transactions. Finance lease does not give the uh, lessor, I mean lessee, the right to own the asset at the end of uh, the transaction, except there is a ultra outright transfer and clear contract signing between the both party to either sell or gift out the items. When I mean lessor, lessor is the uh, seller of an item, while lessee is the buyer of a particular asset. The two must ensure that they agree on, on both um, rental fee and the period of time for repayment. What are the difference between conventional lease and Ijara? Repayment pattern. The other uh, Ijara, the both lessee and lessor agreed on a particular rate to pay for a particular asset and does not change even till the end of the uh, transactions. But for conventional, this depends on profit and value of the assets determined by the bank. The number two, Ijara must follow the tenant of um, Sharia laws. Why for conventional, it, the lease follows the bank operational laws. For Ijara, there is no agreement between the lessor and lessee if the transaction or asset is not readily available. But for conventional uh, lease, both lessee and lessor can sign the agreement even before the uh, asset is ready for use. Thanks for joining me today. This will be draw the curtain on uh, Ijara 
contract. On our next episode, I'll be talking about Muraba. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mustaina. Hi everyone, my name is Zena Baletipi Salam, the creative director of Articraft Cakes and More. You're welcome to our online baking course where you'll be learning to bake different types and flavors of cake. I believe you have the best learning experience as I will be showing you different tips and tricks to achieve the best cake science and art. See you in class. How to maximize productivity in and out of the house as women. Tip number six, stay on task with mobile app. The truth is that many of us suffer from procrastination, even the most productive of us. But procrastination is more than procrastination. Some people are legitimately suffering from procrastination to the extent that they may need help. The problem I have found is that many of us were raised by perfectionist parents who used to be on our necks to do things. And for some reasons, that idea of having someone telling us what to do, when to do, how to do it, is something that many of us are used to. Unfortunately, adulting doesn't work like that. Even your mother who used to remind you to do something is expecting you to do the same for her and yourself. So how do you keep track when you get distracted, when you feel overwhelmed, when you just don't feel like it. One of the best things that happened to us in our generation is that we live in a world where there's an app for everything. So there is an app for keeping your attention. For instance, I have friends who have apps on their phones that tell them when to log out of social media. If they don't log out, it will log them out. I have an app that tells me when to go to bed. So at 10 p.m. every evening, my phone turns into great skill, which is terrible for, to, to read. So it makes it hard for me to keep going on on video app or binging on anything, even to be on WhatsApp. So immediately my phone goes on great skill. I know that it is time to put the phone down and go to sleep. And there are numerous apps on every on your app store that can help you find the right app for whatever struggle that you have. You should definitely go look them out. So that's tip number six on how to stay productive and maximize your productivity in and out of the house as a woman. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi My people, my people, how on a day? Again, on TV, I won't tell you, and I ain't the same as Tarina TV, not the number one of Bongia Muslim channel worldwide. Worldwide? Wait, Arabs are actually watching me. Are you Hal Mushahideen Al Kiro? Wa Mutabirin Al Aberor? Hadihi Mustarina TV. La that what is Zir? Wa Kun Mutana Sikan? Anna Khadija bint Aba Yaumi. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, he was salat was salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are welcome once again to Musta'ina TV, the Marita segment. We're talking about issues in the home and we actually have delved a lot into what should be known by every member of the family, especially the husband and the wife. Today, I want to be specific. I want to go straight to what is very germane to the intent of this segment, and that is Hukuku Zawj wa wajibatu zawja the right of the husband and the obligations of the wife. I'm going to mention four here, and I'll do the same thing for the wife too. Hukuku Zawjati, the right of the wife, wa wajibatu zawj and the obligations of the husband. It's a detailed explanation of what should be expected, summarized in points that can easily be remembered by every one of us, not excluding myself. Now, the first right of the husband that the wife should give to him that becomes a responsibility for the wife is الطاعة في المعروف الطاعة في المعروف 
One of the sayings of Prophet Muhammad Sallam said that if a woman performs a five daily salat and obeys the husband to the rest of the hadith which says she will be told to enter al jannah from whichever of the gates she wishes to enter through. So obedience of the husband plays a very important role in achieving our target in building a stable home. Obedience. And this obedience is not left absolutely like that. Bil ma'roof. It should be in good things. Number two is al-qarar fil bayt. What we want, what is expected, what is the right of the husband with respect to the wife is that she's expected to stay at home. وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ Allah says in the Quran, stay in your homes, O women. وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى And when you are going out, don't go out like the ignorant, the day, like the days of ignorance. That is, you go out with decorum. The time and how you go out. Number three is al qiwamatu One of the rights of the husband is for him to be the leader in the home. In the aspect of wilayatu ta'adib, the right to discipline, to take decisions, to command, and that it should be effected, is his right. Well, is the then and his permission be sought. He can actually know. If a man is in charge, when he dishes out the disciplinary rules and gives out orders, orders, laying examples, and at the same time seeking his permission before anything is done in the home, this is al kiwama. It shows he's in charge. Number four, al istijabatu, al istijabatu, ithbatu al al istijabatu. Responding to his rights when he takes a decision, a conclusive decision on an issue. The right to correct, the right to discipline, the right to check and balance everything in the home. His right to reinforce discipline in the house. To establish discipline in the house, it should not be called to question. And if it's called to question, it should be in the best of manner, at the best time, at the right time, in a very beautiful uh, atmosphere that will make him accept the attention he's being called to. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our homes a fortified home. We shall be meeting in the next segment where I'll be talking about rights of women that becomes obligation for men. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مستعينا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Mustaino Muhammad Learn with me and my friends on Mustaino Kiddies السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ما ربك رجلات
Put yourself to the right, child. Halal vice is so.